swatting away a, a gnat which is flying in, into the kitchen. Well, we have Guile from, from Street phone, Fighter 2 leaning against a statue on which is sitting a kestrel. There's a small group of people across the world whose brains harbour an extraordinary ability. Well, he man, I use in binaries. 11001111011. They're called mnemonists and they're able to remember thousands of random numbers, binary digits, and playing cards in a single viewing. As mental athletes, theirs is a world of intense competition and continual training. Using unique mental techniques, they not only push their own boundaries, but those of the human brain. Incidentally, it was seven of diamonds, ace of spades, four of hearts, three of spades, jack of diamonds, five of clubs. But ultimately, their main aim is to make it to the Middle Eastern Kingdom of Bahrain, and become the next memory champion of the world. I just memorized 234 digit number using the journey that goes around this house and garden. Okay, in here we have a soldier watching a war movie from which a leg is flying out through the wall there, which is landing on a gammon chop where there's a balloon attached to a toga and in the pocket of the toga a knife, which is being taken by someone from out in the hall. There are a thousand different possible combinations of three digits. I've got an image for each, each one of those pre-programmed in my head, so to speak. 104? 104 is a, a, a ballet performance. 762? A cane. 118? A Welshman. 219? Um, a Mr. Um, what's he called? Mr. Mackay from Porridge. 338? Miffy, the rabbit, cartoon rabbit. We all have hidden talents. For Ben Pridmore, it's an extraordinary memory. Just a second, I've forgotten my... Ben uses a technique um, that allows him to memorise thousands of random numbers. 553. <laughs> a chimney. 554. Five, a lurker, a man lurking in the shadows. Numbers become images that are placed at set points along a route. Ben then turns those images into a story he can remember. Where there's a, a camel being eaten by um, Flubber with a street sign and a pair of scissors from which someone is um, flashing their bum. <laughs> well, it was more of a gradual process. I dreamed up the list over the course of, um, of three days and drilled it into my head when I wasn't doing anything, but then it was a case of um, going through the list constantly in my head on my way to and from work every morning until I got so I could reel it off. And the gimp from Pulp Fiction, who's talking over here on the driveway to Jamie Theakston, waving a sucker dart in a, a gale, fierce wind, which is blowing out to the front here. Sushi and a set of bongos being played by a rabbit. And in the back garden, we have Zygote the Mutant brandishing a cane at another baboon. And that's me 234 digits. This is the place I grew up, so that's where my journeys, my visualizations look like. If I'd grown up somewhere else, they'd look like that. 30 year old Ben is about to embark upon his most important journey yet. It's one that could take him halfway around the globe and potentially crown him memory champion of the world. It starts in Shropshire. All that it leaves for me now is to, uh, to wish you the best of fortune in the use of your brains during this day and to, uh, to look forward to congratulating the first UK memory champion. Thank you, may the games begin. 10 seconds. The World Championships takes place in Bahrain. That's where the giants of memory, the titans, clash. And the UK champion um, will be there battling for the world crown. Go. The, the mind spot of memory is the new kid on the block. So it's, uh, it's exploding. Over the next eight hours, Ben and the other competitors will undergo 10 separate memory disciplines. Their challenge will be to recall hundreds of historical dates and random words and the sequences of thousands of numbers and binary digits. 
as well as the order of up to 15 decks of playing cards. Ben's just memorized a hundred numbers in a hundred seconds by creating one of his unique visual stories. Well, it's, it started with a um, plane dropping off a suitcase, which um, in turn um, opened up and revealed a, a loofer, which was shot down by a laser controlled by a giant snake monster thing, which was getting on board a train, sending an, a plane, an identical one to the first one, <laughs> 621 again, uh, to robot um, in a betting shop next to a temple. Um, and then what came after that is the one I'm completely blank on. And that's the story that creates those hundred digits. It makes sense in my head, at least. <laughs> you want something ready? Go. The final event is the speed cards. Competitors have to correctly memorize the order of a shuffled deck of cards as quickly as possible. No one in the world has ever broken the 30 second barrier. Okay, so your five minutes refill time starts now. Competitors are then given just five minutes to duplicate the deck of cards they've just memorized. Stop recall. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've just memorised a pack of cards in 26.28 seconds, which is a new world record, knocking nearly five seconds off the previous best, which <laughs> I'm quite delighted with. I've done this kind of time in practice, but not come close to it in competitions before. It's the lucky t-shirt. I always do well in a competition with the Zoom Zoom t-shirt. I save it for the special occasions. If I had my way, I'd wear it sort of all three days at the World Championships, but I tend to sweat a lot when I get nervous and I'm filling in, so it'd be pretty unpleasant by the end. So I go for my second luckiest and third luckiest shirts. I save this one for the final day as a rule. Yeah, I'm pretty chuffed with that all in all. How are you doing? The UK has its new memory champion and Ben is now set to take on the rest of the world. Of man's first disobedience and the fruit of that forbidden tree whose mortal taste brought death unto the world and all our woe, sing, O heavenly muse, that on the secret top of Horeb, or Sinai, I've got a, uh, a project on the go, which is I'm trying to learn the whole of Paradise Lost, um, which is 12,000 or 18,000 line poem. Um, what I know so far it takes me about seven hours to recite. So at the end, it would take like 28 hours. Ed Cook is currently ranked the 17th best memorizer in the world. So I begin somewhere like here and I chuck a, a few images basically under the shade of this tree. Like most competitors, Ed uses a visualization technique to turn information into images. Images then become stories that play out around the grounds of Ed's home. For him, it's a love of nature that inspires his favorite roots. It's quite soggy terrain. I think, I'm not absolutely sure about this, but my intuition is that um, the quality of the terrain has quite a strong influence on how quickly you can traverse it in your imagination. It's interesting because one of my trees appears to have died. I love the trees. Basically, uh, when you're associating images to trees, you need to make sure the trees are very different from each other in your imagination. So that when, for instance, under this tree, I have, you know, whatever it would be, Tiger Woods uh, throwing lemons at a giraffe or something, uh, it's very obviously this tree and not that one or that one or any of the 60 or so other trees I use. Very good. Uh, so we might pile up here. Having recently graduated with a first-class psychology degree, 25-year-old Ed lives at the family home with his two younger sisters. Al, so yeah, you're number 82, because you were born in 1980. Okay. Phoebe's 87, because you were born in 87. Dad's 26 for no reason at all. So they're part of my image vocabulary. Where's mum 27? Well, mum's actually 26 as well, it was kind of dad and mum. Oh. 
my I think my mother disapproves. She thinks it's just uh, a waste of my time. Oh, she thinks it's just weird. She's always upset because I always because she always asks me to take the right side of the oven, and I forget. She's always like, I told you, <laughs> it's not it's not practical. Uh, my sisters, um, I think they think it's vaguely funny, but not impressed. Um, and my dad sort of remains stolidly neutral on the subject. I think it's a bit. I think everyone thinks it's a bit stupid in my family. <laughs> well. Um, I think he's been doing it for a few years now, and, and initially it's a very good laugh. But um, uh, we thought he more or less got to the end of his life with world memory, and he might get a job or something. But uh, he's still tickling around the edges. And then we'll move on to the to the gate. The sort of memory tricks he does for world memory is hard to translate into how they could be useful to somebody actually carrying on their daily life. In terms of the interactive properties of gates, gates can do lots with lots of people. So I've had like Anna Kornikova doing various things to this gate. Uh, I've actually arrived, I'm number 22 in my own system. I've, uh, I've perched on this gate before. And in fact, I've er perched it because I, um, I tend to have myself, uh, to have my characters going in this direction into the wood. I think one thing he could be as a barrister would be the sort of thing he could do, but we shall see. I love the trees. I think I'd like him to see him do well in this Bahrain one since he's doing it and then maybe um, give it up for a while and do something else completely. Uh, being one member champion is just hilariously cool. I can't think of something I'd more like to be. Ben Pridmore lives alone as a jobbing accountant in Derby. Ben's parents separated when he was nine, and in his free time, he likes to keep his grandmother up to date with his achievements. Hello, Grandma. How's it going? <laughs> Whoa, sorry, Alan. You want to sit down here? <laughs> okay. Yes, boss. I was at a memory competition last Saturday, the UK Championships. I, I won the competition. I, I broke a world record for. Memorising a pack of cards in 26 seconds. Get off. <laughs> I don't believe it, Ben. I want to believe it, but I can't see how anybody can do it. Oh, I like this. It's stylish, isn't it? You must give it a good place of honour, Ben, because it's a, it's a marvellous thing. It really is. Are you the model for this leaping figure here? Yep, that's me. Nimble <laughs> as a gazelle, you know me. <laughs> <laughs> I think Ben is a bit of a loner. He can suddenly close the door and leave you, and you can't get in. Mind you, when he's had a couple of pints, it's a different tale. Uh, but ordinary is a bit on the quiet side, and he doesn't brag about his um, achievements, which uh, I find very endearing. I mean, I go downstairs and say, what do you think my clever Dick Ben's done now? <laughs> yeah, this is uh, my late father who died um, just a bit over a year ago. It's hard to believe he's still gone. He's such a major part of my life, obviously. <laughs> I do miss him a lot still. Well, he was always very proud of the memory stuff. More than anyone, I think. He's, <laughs> he's always pleased to hear about it. Yeah, I'm sure he'd be delighted by the record. The famous white stick. <laughs> Next time Ben visits his grandmother, it could well be the world title he's showing off. These world championships will be the biggest yet. They're the brainchild of self-styled visionary Tony Buzan. Hi, my name is Tony Buzan, and I'm here to tell you that whatever you dream is possible. Your brain is infinite. All you have to do to realize it is to become a warrior of the mind. Hi! 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 Some people call me a guru. I'm a teacher, and guru is an Indian word that means teacher. So whatever the word is in the local language that means teacher, that is what I am, and author, 
and organizer of memory competitions. If you can't manage the manager of knowledge, your Since Tony Buzan created the first memory competition some 15 years ago, there's been a rapid increase in those eager to find ways of improving their brain. And what is the manager of knowledge? The human brain. It's a trend Tony's been quick to embrace. He endorses various merchandise and is a best-selling author. His 92 books on the brain have sold 7 million copies worldwide. I personally would like to be remembered as an ambassador for the human brain. I'd also like to be remembered as the one who started the memory championships and a number of the championships around the cognitive skills of the human brain. Finally, I'd like to be remembered as a, a poet and one who loved mankind. Every one of us, every one of us, is brilliant. And it's simply a matter of nurturing and unleashing that. And that's part of the function of the World Memory Championships, to show everybody in the world just how amazing your brain is. Tony Buzan's PR department are keen that Ben's new world record makes waves beyond just the memory community. Well, everyone's been saying lately we need to do something to raise the profile of memory competitions in Britain. I mean, it's not the kind of thing you're going to get into unless you basically stumble across it like I did. And so now I've just got this whirlwind of publicity in the East Midlands. Plus, I'm Ben Fridmore and I've just Sorry, been crowned. We did just one more, Chuck Charlie just did a <laughs> Wellington boot top as well. Plus, I'm Ben Fridmore and I've just been crowned Britain's memory champion. See me in action live on Central tonight. Three, Stop having these endless two, chopping and changing. One, and cue on. D roll. How on earth do you, you memorise it? I turn each pair of cards into a mental image of an object or person and visualise them at different points along a journey, in this case around the rooms of my grandma's old house in Toton. That is just incredible. Your brain must be full of it. Thank you, Ben. That was so Thank you very much. So much great to meet you. It really was very, very impressive. It was absolutely so brilliant. For some reason, I'm in a strangely cheerful mood after that. Maybe tomorrow I'll go walking around the town and people will say, that's him off the tally, that is. Hey! Ben's going to have about 30 seconds to memorise them and then we'll go through and, and see how he does. And while we do that, let's see how That's shoppers fantastic. in Nottingham got on when they had to remember just six cards. Five, Prince. Seven. Do you think the average man on the street is a bit useless? Forgotten. God, no. What kind of... It's hardly useless not to be able to remember six cards when someone waves them in front of your face. <laughs> in fact, useless is what would describe what I do. Incidentally, it was seven of diamonds, ace of spades, four of hearts, three of spades, jack of diamonds, five of clubs. With only weeks to go before the World Memory Championships in Bahrain, Ben's eager to test his current form against a long-standing German rival. Germany is very much the nerve centre of the memory world. Before the competition, I suppose there's a certain amount of tension going on. Well, this is a much bigger thing than the UK's. I've got all the best in the world going up against me. So, you know, there's much more impetus to do something great if I'm going to end up with the top score. Really, I'm going out to beat Gunter. He's certainly beatable, although he hasn't shown much sign of it over the last few years. 46-year-old Dr. Gunter Karsten has previously won the German championship a record seven times. Ben starts well, but in his strongest discipline, the speed cards, he tries to memorize his deck too quickly. There was one sticking out that, like that. Why didn't you put the, that then in the, in the I didn't know I'd put them together in the wrong order. I thought I'd done it right, but yeah. there was one sticking out that I thought was the bottom and I tucked it in. But 
I can see what happened. It was. Mm. It doesn't matter. Do not count. So you will anyway get the ti uh, title in top one in, uh, well, in yeah. Bahrain. <laughs> Dr. Gunter Karsten is in the best form of his life, but despite being the dominant force in Germany, he's never won the world memory title. This year he's the favorite, and he's eager to show what he can do in Bahrain. I like to compete against other people. If you don't compete, you just, just live without really knowing where your limits are, and then you maybe waste some of your possibilities. Gunther's wife, Michaela, is also a keen competitor, okay. and together they make an efficient partnership. Zero, 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 one, zero, one. Correct. Zero, one, 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 zero, one. When they don't know much about the sport, one, zero, they think zero, I'm a genius. Zero, one, one. Yeah, okay. I try to explain zero, one, it that uh, most one, of it one is technique and practice. Okay. Oh, you are good now. Eins, zwei, drei, vier. I had a quite normal memory. I could memor maybe memorize, I don't know, 50, 50 digits in an hour. And then I improved. And uh, now I'm holding the world record with memorizing 1,949 digits. <laughs> Gunther's consistent performances have made him a household name across Germany. Improving his techniques are a constant part of everyday life. Even during preparing food, I'm practicing. Because, for instance, with the biggest knife, cutting onions with a big knife is like Chopper, it's, it's a number 694. So whenever I do this, I see this number to get the direct link between this three-digit number and the activity. So a lot of activities in, in normal life are associated to three-digit numbers. I'm, I'm not really a good loser. Normally, I am very angry at myself because normally I lose because I make make mistakes. The most important lesson I learned is really believe in yourself and to have focus on your targets and dreams. For Dr. Günther Karsten, second place in this year's World Championships is not an option. With the World Memory Finals in Bahrain only a few days away, Ed Cook is keen to make the most of his time. Currently ranked 17th in the world, he and training partner Lucas are keen to take advantage of some high altitude training in the mountains of Austria. We're about 25 years old, um, and 25 to 27 is basically when you peak. We are approaching the top of our mnemonic game with the sprinters, the young guns. So we've got this year, maybe a couple more years, and then it's really the twilight of our careers. And I really don't want to do, I think nine of us want to be in a kind of Tim Henman situation where we blew our chance. Yeah, so I met Lucas about four years ago in uh, at the World Championships in Kuala Lumpur. And uh, every year before the championships, we come to the mountains where Lucas lives as a goat herd. And uh, we train up mentally and physically and we uh, really attune ourselves before the competitions. Is it goat what? Uh, <laughs> okay, go! Faster! Come on, let's go! The mind can get pretty clogged, you know, when you're down in the, uh, the city and the rest of it. Emails, text messages, Facebook, appointments to uh, fulfill. One, zero, zero, one. Repeat. <laughs> 
Coming up here is a million miles away from all that stuff. So the big spaces, the sense of, of, of purity and freshness, these all kind of contribute to a good zen mental atmosphere, which is highly conducive uh, to effective memorization. Zero. One. <laughs> Sorry, man, I can't carry it any longer. So what do you reckon? Half an hour of binaries and then up into the mountain. There's a bunch of things you've got to eat to get your brain really um, on the nail. One of them is eggs, raw eggs for breakfast. That gives you protein. <clears throat> There's nothing like it in the morning. <laughs> Vitamin B12, so that's livers, kidneys, uh, fish, um, preferably raw. Uh, lots of fruit, um, lots of porridge, and, and that really feeds into the quality of your memorization at the end of the day. When you're doing your roots, do you jump through windows ever? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Go through walls? Mm, sometimes, but I try not to, try normally not. just take a good which I can ideally walk. Because I'm thinking of, um, of cleaning my roots, just going through them with like an airbrush, rearranging furniture, cleaning surfaces, and just going through all my roots the day before each competition, um, and so that they're just like sparkling clean. Of my uh, seven family members, it's just me and my uh, supportive little sister who think this isn't a waste of time. I mean, a, it's fun, of course, but B, it reveals stuff about, you know, what works for the mind, what, what works for memory. But um, I guess there's, a, there's an amusing quote from uh, Goethe, which I hope you don't mind my <laughs> letting out at this point, which is that all great thoughts have been had before, the only job is to have them again. And I think that's really true about memory techniques. Like, this stuff was known, and we've just completely forgotten it. Uh, education is a kind of based on a sort of military psychology, a way of keeping people off the streets and out of trouble preparing them for boring jobs and this kind of stuff. And uh, there are other ways of doing things, other ways of doing education, better ways. The upshot is, is that if this was deeply integrated into all our education, we'd have this wonderful, vivid, imaginative, sophisticated world in all of our minds. And I think that's obviously uh, something to be sought after. Next morning, Ed's up bright and early. There's work to be done before breakfast. Among the players for the number one title are uh, Ben Pridmore, a phenomenal mnemonist. This is going to be a tough one. Gunter Karsten, um, sort of German spy looking kind of character, uh, and very, very good, hyper consistent, uh, totally determined. And my hope is that um, the pressure will come down on them and there'll be some sort of mental meltdown. They'll get the yips, and then I'll just kind of ply through and emerge champion of the world in memory, uh, which will, you know, um, allow me to retire from active life. That's the dream. It's the final countdown to Bahrain, and German champion Dr. Gunter Karsten's training schedule intensifies. I competed uh, many times on the World Championship and I became a couple of times second as world champion, but I never won VM. So um, my motivation is to get the first place in Bahrain. UK champion Ben Pridmore has his own approach to last minute training. And time can do his brother Joseph is here to help. Are you still I think it's very important when preparing for a world championship to be in a happy frame of mind. <laughs> <laughs> we were fantastic. We were <laughs> oh god, I couldn't drink any more there. I think downing that last bit of yours was a mistake, to be honest. <laughs> oh, I don't know, that's three pint minimum. <laughs> they would do because somebody was lord to the <laughs> It's the morning after, and following his recent TV appearance, Ben is feeling better than he'd hoped. Are you confident or? Uh, pretty confident. How long do you get to stay for? I'm well, the competition's Friday and Saturday. I'm coming back on Sunday, so yeah. nice little holiday. Oh, not bad. Oh. I feel quite starstruck. <laughs>
it's very important to me that I win this one. I was very disappointed not to win it last year. This year I know I'm better than I ever have been, so if I don't win it this time I'll be extremely disappointed with myself. Well, Gunter's going to be the main rival. There's going to be plenty of competition from the others as well. Ed and Lucas are going to be dangerous. When I see Bahrain, I see uh, visions of the future. Visions for humanity, and visions for prosperity, and visions for the mind sports of the future. This is the championships which has the most money, the most national support, the largest number of registrations. It's going to be big, and I predict that it's going to be really, really close. You've got some titanic battles coming up. Everybody is here to win, and one small error and there's going to be some other grandmaster of memory behind you, ready to pounce. Road 1701, the Starship Enterprise's registry number. Useful, mnemonic. It's hot. It's unbelievably hot. And humid. <sighs> I'm sweating like whatever the halal equivalent of a pig is. Over the next three days, 34 Grand Masters of Memory will battle for supremacy in the biggest World Memory Championships ever. Good morning and welcome and greetings from uh, the Kingdom of Bahrain and the World Memory Championships. What they do in the World Memory Championships is like the uh, decathlon in athletics. It's 10 different competitions, and the overall best in each of those 10 becomes the world champion. For example, this afternoon, the competitors will be given a 4,500 digit long phone number, and they will have to memorize as many of those digits as they possibly can. I'm a sort of minor celebrity among these people. Thank you. Okay. It's great to be um, <laughs> to be here and surrounded by people who know my name and <laughs> want to hang out with me. You look sharp today. <laughs> Thanks. I lost my hat. <laughs> Nebula. N e b u l a. N e b u. Okay. Ne Nebula. The meaning is some like not clear. Blur. Yeah. The cloud. The nebula cloud. Very good. Is in page. Let me see. Yeah. 983, True. the first word, nebula. Good, good. And how about the word um, osmosis? <coughs> the first of the 10 events are about to begin, but already the mind games have started. Oh, but it's, it's too close to the competition. Gunter wants extra sheets for the abstract images event. Competitors have 15 minutes to memorize 250 images, but Gunter knows he can do more. More images will give him more points. The rest of the competitors are kept waiting. Maybe I will decide not to compete then. Seriously? Is, is it that important? That is very, very important, yeah. I think we're going to go ahead with an extra page. Otherwise, yeah. we're not going to get the competition started. <laughs> okay, thanks. Yeah. Very good. I think he takes things to heart more. He, he, he's more serious about the whole attitude. Um, really, these distractions are just part and parcel of the competition. Gunter's mind games pay off. He wins the event and takes an early lead. Gold medal position, Dr. Gunter Carson. Well, I'm really happy that I won this di discipline. Uh, that was important for me. I wanted to have a better result, but uh, to have a gold medal in that discipline is, uh, is a good start. Next is a chance for Ben to fight back. It's his favorite event, the binary digits. 
For the next 30 minutes, Ben will turn thousands of zeros and ones into characters and create a unique visual story. Swatting away a, a gnat, which is flying into the, into the kitchen there, into a mobile phone, phone leaning against a statue, on which is sitting a kestrel, and a tabby cat eating a saucer, at a camel. And we have Guile from Street Fighter 2, and from outside now Lee. The He Man I use in binaries. 11001101. The Blue Beetle. Ben has successfully remembered 4,140 binary digits in 30 minutes. It's a new world record. <laughs> During the break, Gunther takes stock. He's been shaken by Ben's performance. I'm leading in competition, but uh, Ben has shown that he's in top form, top shape, with his new world record binary numbers. So maybe I have to be satisfied with the second place. 50. It's like juggling, it um, makes you using both sides of your brain together, so uh, it raises the concentration. Now it's the marathon card discipline, where competitors have one hour to memorize as many decks of cards as possible. Ben holds the world record of 1,404 cards, and he's hoping to win the event and take the overall lead in the competition. This is one of my favorites, but... Uh, there's definitely the possibility of going wrong with things here. Yeah. At the moment the world record's 27 packs, which I did last year. With any luck I'll beat that this time. Last time I was going for 30 packs I got uh, 27 right. This time I'm going for 33 altogether. Unless I feel like doing something mad and going for 36 on the spur of the moment. Oh yes, uh, far more than 30. That is what I expected. He has a world record. Uh, it was 27, I think, and uh, that was already last year. And I think he practiced a lot. So uh, he could even do it. Yeah, this is very impressive. In search of another record, Ben will be using his visualization technique to travel along some familiar routes. Today we're going around, uh, let's see, Cambridge, then Nottingham, Burton on Trent, Meadow Hall Centre in Sheffield, <laughs> and Van Peterborough to finish off. There are many different systems, easy ones and very, very complicated and time-consuming ones. And Ben has the most complicated system. His system to have, his system is an enormous advantage because he looks at two cards at the same time and two cards is a picture for him. Those combinations, they are more than 2,700. To, to memorize this system is like knowing another language. With my system, I have to memorize double as much as he. Stop memorizing. Ben's cards are the first to be marked. Two of spades. He's gone for broke by attempting a new world record of 1,872 cards. 400 more than his previous best. If he gets it right, the world title will almost certainly be his. All Gunter can do is wait. Yeah, just finished marking uh, Ben's papers. He got ten and a half packs of cards right. He went for a possible 36. He would have broken the world record, but unfortunately uh, it wasn't his day. Ben, ludicrously stupidly, tried to do 36 decks of cards. There's about a 1 in 100 chance he'll do that, and duly he got 10 and a half. Gunter nailed the save 20. And so we find ourselves in the position that they're absolutely neck and neck.
It's the final day of the World Memory Championships, and the competition couldn't be tighter. German champion Gunther and UK champion Ben are neck and neck. We all live also from mistakes of the others. So I, I got a chance to probably overtake him. The chance is still very big that um, I might win. Do you ever relax? Well, uh, sometimes, but very rarely. Somehow I have problems with that. Although most of the press attention is on the big guns, Ed Cook is enjoying performing on the world stage. He's about to start the spoken numbers event. Basically they speak one number per second for a hundred seconds. And the scoring system is such that if you make an error on say the seventh digit, you only get six points even if you got the rest correct. All the weedy competitors freak out and panic. Okay, that's Wayne Rooney. Five, Hitting a zero, hockey ball four, three, at Chris Tarrant, while well, Princess zero, Diana two, goes, four, hey yo! Zero, nine. <laughs> So I've just got a, a perfect score on the spoken numbers, 100 numbers, spoken one per second, remember them all. That doesn't happen unless you train at altitude. That doesn't happen unless you spend an awful lot of time in the gym and the strategy room over the whole course of the year. It's not something which happens on the day, it's something you prepare for. Thank you. <laughs> the final event of the competition is the speed cards, and it's the one in which Ben has made his name. It's, it seems that going into the speed cards, you, you and Ben are literally within one point. That has never happened before. <laughs> I know the logical thing is to do a safe one first and make sure I get second place at least. But what is a safe one? 30 seconds? No, 30 seconds is a risky one. <laughs> a safe one is one minute. That would make sure I get second place. To beat Gunther, Ben not only needs a perfect score, but a faster time. Unsure of his tactics, Ben is given a timely reminder that he's the best in the world at this event. I'm sure it can't be, but this one got a time of 26.28 on it when I turn it on. This might actually be the same one that I did that time on. <laughs> and he just gave me one at random. <laughs> I'm happy with this lucky omen of having got the same timer that I used to break the record with six weeks ago. Ten seconds. This final event will decide the next memory champion of the world. You want to really go? Ben's gone for broke and stops the clock at just over 32 seconds. <coughs> Gunther memorises his pack in just over 47. To start memorising, your five minutes of recall time begins now. Ben now duplicates the memorised pack. If his recall is faultless, he'll be the next world memory champion. Come on, come on. Yes. 
Gunter's memorization, though slower than Ben's, is faultless. He's the new memory champion of the world. That was the closest Well, I'm a little annoyed with myself and disappointed to have lost, but it's great that Gunter's finally got a world championship under his belt after all these years. It's been a lot of fun and well, <laughs> I'll just have to do better next year, won't I? I think I, I won because I had the better strategy and really stick to the strategy and was the right one. If I would be a Ben, I would be very angry about myself, knowing probably that he is maybe the better one, but didn't show it because his strategies were wrong. Doing this is a number eight, 841, drawing the back of the tower. I will enjoy this victory now for a certain time, and then I will set another target and try to go for it. That's how life works. It's always a bit of a drag to go back to reality. Going back to being just one of a gaggle of accountants, year-end accounts. <laughs>